Hey everybody, welcome to the Game Side Podcast number 24. I'm your host, Eric, the Game Side Guy Kiefer, alongside <laughs> the informer slash performer, James Riley. How are you today, sir? I'm doing okay. Uh, we finished... Oh, Temple beat Tulane in basketball. That's good. Okay. Nice! Um, there you go. Uh, we finished My Hero Academia today. We didn't, I mean, we finished what is le- what has been released. Um it's so good. It's, it's like so it's there's really good. not anything else to say about it. If you haven't watched it, go do it. Go it's... watch it. Also, you were like, "Oh, this last episode they're going to the mall. It's going to be filler." It's yeah, the mo- it's like one of the most intense episodes. Yeah, yeah it was it was amazing. <laughs> it was one of the best episodes in the whole show. Because well, because like spoilers. We were kind of well, yes, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. So you've probably seen it. If you're watching this, you're, you've probably seen My Hero. I would imagine. You, I feel like those spheres cross over. If you haven't watched My Hero Academia, skip ahead like a minute and a half or something. <laughs> Trying to like put a tagline with the spoilers oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in, but um, like yeah, we were like because the end of the last episode was was so great. It was like oh, like you know they they did they it, they did beat, the thing. they beat All Might or whatever they got out of the thing, and then and then there's like the the UA heroes decide to take a trip to the mall after mm-hmm. their and that's like literally the only description of the episode. Yeah. It's like they did decide to take a trip to the mall after their their trying final exams. And so, like, at the very beginning, it's like, oh, like, this, we're so excited to go on this, like, cute little journey with our favorite characters. And then, like, like right away when he was by himself, I was like, oh, God, no. Like, where is this going? And I was like, no! Like, oh, God, it was, it was so good. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Aaron, I'm going to ask to do the opposite thing. Can you slide down the slider just a fingernail again? Yeah. Like we did last time. I always put it a little bit too high, and then I feel like we're going to be fine, but then... You guys get off on your little rants when we start clipping. So yeah, just, just like the, t- just like the tiniest little hair. That's funny because there's a hair on the. Oh yeah, did you measure? Did you really measure? Exactly. Like, yeah. So what I was saying the inst- the instruction I just gave is to Aaron the tattooed tiger all tricked or. What's up with you, dude? Oh, uh, not a lot. I've uh, I've been playing through the Bioshock collection. I think I talked about that. Yeah, you said it last week. week. Um, main thing, I started watching this new anime called, I don't know if this is the right way to pronounce it, but it's called Kyoso Giga, or Giga, okay. something like that, on, on Verve, okay. and I fa- it's like, it's not based off of a manga, it's like, a, apparently was like a web series that turned into like a full anime, um, and it's just like the most absurd shit ever, like it's so insane, it's kind of like Fully Cooly, okay. mm-hmm. um, it's, like the first episode is episode zero and it's just called preview and it like throws you right into fucking everything without explaining like what the hell is going on so it's not really a preview yeah (laughs) and it's just so fucking crazy all this shit going on at once there's like a monk riding a moped fighting demons who's also his sister with a bunch of like fake stars hanging around in a giant tower i don't know it's really ridiculous um and then episode one like, goes back and is like, all right, so here's why all of this shit is the way it is. And it just keeps going on. It's The basic premise of it is um, a monk in, like, the early eras of Japan uh, discovered he had the ability to, like, bring anything that he drew to life. Okay. So like we were literally okay. Have you ever seen this the show Chalk Zone? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, were literally, we were literally talking about it this great. morning. Yeah, it's kind of like Chalk Zone. Um, I fucking love Chalk Zone. And best. it and so like everybody's scared of his like weird powers, so he moves off into the mountains to be by himself. And this rabbit that he draws, Koto, falls in love with him, weird. but is like, oh well, you know, I'm just like a drawing of a rabbit. Like he's not gonna love me. So the rabbit Koto bargains with a god. Like, one of Buddha's eyes or something like that. And so, the god is like, hey, I'll let you borrow my body so you can, you know, like, love him and, like, fall in love with him and, like, actually, like, be a person. Uh, But you have to give it back once he, like, actually reciprocates the love. And so he turns, so she does that. They have kids that he also brings to life with drawings. Though they have one human kid. (laughs) Okay, that's strange. And... (laughs) What? It's like, like, it's like a little mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> and like, as they're doing that, they like they get this. They get like a letter from the town, and it's like, "Hey, you guys are causing fucking problems. We don't want you. We don't want you around." And so they move into this giant like world that he's just been drawing and like putting on his wall as wallpaper. Chalk zone. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's chalk, chalk zone. Yeah, that's really cool. And actually. they move in there, and like everything's crazy. Everything fixes itself, and there's never any war. Nobody ever dies or is born. And then. This fucking random girl from another dimension 
crashes into the world and fucks everything up and like makes it into a real world by disrupting the temporal balance. It's a lot of like parallel universe shit going on. I kind of okay. like that. And it's just it's insane. Like it's so fucking good. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I dig really that. Cool. Yeah. Deep Web Nomad, Alex Vicito, wow. on my right. What's up with you? What have you been doing? Playing, um, watching, listening? Nothing super exciting. Drinking. Um, I was kind of, yeah, mostly that last one. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I got back into Subnautica a little bit. Yep. Um, I picked it up and played a couple hours. Um, it's the final version. And, um, like, I, I had played a lot of the early access, and, like, there's not any major huge changes that I've noticed from when I last played, but, like, it's everything's a lot tighter. And the graphics were a little better, so it's kind of it's, it's nice. Good. Um, I also started a D and D campaign with some of my friends from back home. Cool. Um, oh yes. Yeah. And we've been playing over World D twenty, nice. um, and Discord. So we we kind of just started. So there's no real stories to tell from it, but it's like it's nice to get back into it. You know, yeah. I haven't pl- I feel like I haven't played since like I, you know, like since high school. So. It's like it's nice to just be back in the you know rolling really dice good. and right, playing right, right. games. Oh shit! Sure. Rolling yeah. digital dice. Yeah, you know, typing in slash roll yeah. is kind of the same thing as rolling your actual dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. roll twenty roll twenty is a really good website. That's what I used for a lot of my and like they have like templates and stuff you can use to like put down maps and like figures and shit. Yeah, we used roll d twenty when I played that campaign. With, oh, yeah. over, over, we actually used um, not Discord, but what's the other one called? Skype. Uh, uh, Raptor. no, it wasn't Skype. It was uh, I forgot what it's called, but uh, you yeah, know, it was like a yeah. chat service. <laughs> oh, uh, Teamspeak. Past. No, oh, or, uh, that's, that's one. Might have been Teamspeak. I don't remember. It was. Some or uh, there's thing. another one. There's and um... uh, yeah, it was cool. Ton of, it's like tons of fun, especially when it's it's really difficult to like, get a bunch it. of people no. in a room. This card is cool. Yeah, I like this card a lot. I'll have you know what I did this week. I was playing my Xbox. No. <laughs> wow. And not only. I completely beat Red Dead Redemption. Nice. I 100%ed Banjo Kazooie. Wow, <laughs> Finally <laughs> finished 100% completion. So I'm pretty much done with my Xbox One. Because I have the rest of the Red Replay. Yeah. Um, I'm probably not, I'm not interested in playing Tui. It's like twice as long. And I liked Kazooie a lot, but I'm not enough to play this. I'm not like, yeah. I don't want more really. And yeah. nothing else on that collection. I'm really interested in, except for maybe Perfect Dark. But even then, I'm like, eh. And the only other games that I have on there would be Gold Games, but that, that I can't also play on Windows 10, um, are Gold Games like Beyond Good and Evil HD. Yeah. But I don't have Gold anymore. I'm not going to buy a whole month or yeah. a year or whatever of Gold, however expensive that would be, just to play this game that I wasn't interested enough to play already. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm probably going to get rid of my Xbox One, and I'll be a, I'll be a Switch slash PC boy. The boy with a Y. Sorry for that. Boy, boy with a Y, I. not boy with an I. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not like that. Okay. I'm pretty basic. If I if I had like a PS4 and like my Vita still, maybe I'd be a boy with an I. But no. oh, I also have my 3DS. Speaking but... of PC, I'm um. Oh yeah. My cousin is uh. Ethan. He yeah, was, my cousin uh, Ethan, who has been a terrorist. <laughs> well, he's been on the podcast. Uh, well, he hasn't been on the podcast, but he's been on the as channel. a terrorist. As a terrorist. Yes, yes, he was. He was the terrorator. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the terror. uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we. I still think we should get T-shirts that say "He's the Terror." Right? Oh, we will, and have like a picture of Ethan's face. Um, <laughs> and he is get, well. He's not giving me his PC, but he is loaning it, yeah. me his PC for a period of time, and I might be buying it from him if I want it, and if it works. That's the thing. He, yeah, he's he's got a new computer because it has some issues. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be borrowing that from him for at least a little while. Um. But yeah, so maybe I'll be I'll be actually a, not a scrub. And, yeah, you uh, <laughs> scrub. Yeah, scrub. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> if you didn't know, this show where a couple of average guys sometimes some awesome guests gather around to bring you the latest in nerd talk and a little insight into our very own lives. It's simple. <laughs> we start out with what to watch out for the wall in the coming week and discuss the latest pop culture news. After that, one of us brings a topic of discussion to the table. And we chat out for your amusement. Just not much further ado. Let's start with the game side. A weekly wrap up. There's we're we're getting into it, boys. Are we? The season is starting. Is we are releasing things oh, left nice. and right oh, consoles. I'm not ready. as much on PC right now, no. but things are coming out, and I'll tell you what they are on the sixth. I'm ready. Shadow to of the Colossus, PS4. <sighs> Damn, does it oh, look pretty? It's it looks so good. It's from oh, oh. Ooh. rip headphones. <laughs> Podcast canceled. 
audio <laughs> listeners, I am so sorry. <laughs> I will try and like cut that out. Yeah. If I remember, somebody remind me. Don't forget. To I'll cut put in. A, I'll put in a comedic little noise again, like I did with Aaron on like episode two. Yeah. Well, sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, shout out the class for PS4. That's only forty bucks, right? Yeah. Oh my god, it is. I yeah, think I'm. I'm, I'm Isn't that cool? I think that's I'm probably gonna cool. buy it because I didn't play it on PS2. <sighs> it looks so good. Yeah, it looks so good. And it's not even like just like a re-release. It's like a full-on like Remake. remastered. It looks so fucking good. It's gorgeous. Anyway, Dragon, Sh- sorry, Dragon Sinker for PS4, and Don Dara for PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Closers for PC. Armored Warfare for PS4. And strap in Mercenary Kings Reloaded Edition for not only PS4 but also Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PS Vita. Weird. Wow. wow. <laughs> Bleed Two for PS4. Dragon Sinker for PS Vita. Oh, I should have put those together. That's fine. Marooners for PS4 and Xbox One, and Heroin Anthem Zero Episode One for PS4. <laughs> Hero Hero Heroin. Oh god. <laughs> On the seventh, we get Little Triangle for Xbox One, right. and Dark Side Detective for Nintendo Switch. We also get Pinstripe and Die, like as in D Y E, for oh. Xbox One. <laughs> well, now I'm die. not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Die. die game. On the eighth, we get Aegis Defenders for PS4. Archi- Archi- Ableist Sorry. Defenders. Arcade Archives Crazy Climber for Nintendo Switch. We get Mercenary Saga Chronicles and Atomic Run Gun Jump Gun for Nintendo Switch. Disc Jam for Nintendo Switch. Aperion Cyber Storm and Aegis Defenders for Nintendo Switch. Why did I not put those together? Oh, Die, I was losing it to Die is this game that looks really good that we we watched that whole video on that one time. Oh, I think. Oh, interesting. It's the that's one where you can like change the colors, yeah. isn't it? No, that's Hue. Oh, that's Hue. Wait, but then what is this? No idea. It looks kind of the same. Sure it doesn't colors. look the same. It looks colorful, sure. You're probably changing colors. You're probably dying stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm ACA dying. Neo Geo. 2020 Power Super Games. Baseball for Nintendo Switch. Oh, my favorite. Black Hole for Nintendo Switch. And Sprint Vector for PC. On the 9th, we get Dragon Quest Builders for Nintendo Switch. Bleed 2 for Xbox One. Overdriven Reloaded Special Edition for Xbox One. Descenders for PC. And Starpoint Gemini Warlords for Xbox One. I've heard that Dragon Quest Builders is actually really good. Yeah, I've heard that too. I, and I would totally get it's into It's like a it. Minecraft cross Dragon Quest. Right. right. Like, just, that's how cool can that be? Yeah. <laughs> but we have two more things. Boys and girls, Ooh, we have Seven Deadly Sins: Knights of Britannia for PS4. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. If you're into that, and really strap in this time. We double buckle. Under Night in Birth X Latest for PS4 and PS Vita. Oh, what? There's a colon what? in there, and the ST of latest is in brackets. What does this mean? Why? I don't know. Is it latest? <laughs> is it late street? Who knows? Late stream. <laughs> Figure it out for yourself on PS4 and PS Vita on the 9th. Visual novel and 2D fighting game. What is it? Undernight in Birth. Oh. Sounds kind of interesting. Also, there's no movies of note that I know are coming out because I'm not a movie person. But you know what movie is coming out, Aaron? It's right up your alley. Movie. 50, fa- f- 50 Shades Freed. Uh, 50 Fates of Grey. I am excited for that. Wait, is that the squeakle to Fifty Shades that's of the, Grey? That's the tree tre- cool. Oh, the tree cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, yes, that's the it is. One. Yeah. Um, also, for comics, we got a whole bunch coming out. Walking Dead, number 176. Things are getting intense. Things are getting heating up. I'm caught up, and I'm ready for the next one. Paper Girls, number 20. Giant Days, number 35. And Snot Girl, number 9. Those are all on the 7th. Then, on the 9th... Wait. Yeah, this Friday, on NBC, we get... And this came up out of nowhere. The 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics opening ceremony. Oh, right. That is happening. Yeah. I totally oh, forgot. I com- like, we completely yeah. forgot because the Super Bowl is the day. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> it's Go Birds. On Friday. Go Birds. Um, it's, it's happening. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for that. I love the Winter Olympics. I it's like really the Olympics cool. in general. Yeah. Plus, I, I, I'm excited to see the opening ceremony. The opening ceremony is usually pretty fucking yeah. cool. And uh, we don't have cable, so I'll watch it after it's over. But we, we, unless we get cable. When I oh, ask true, my yeah, family we get cable. that. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, that's all we have for the upcoming stuff. So let's just transition into the news. If my phone will cooperate. <clears throat> we get the Overwatch Lunar New Year event. Oh, okay, It'll yeah. kick off oh, cool. this Thursday. It'll last at least two weeks if last year is any, you know, Yeah, I kind of remember the one last year. That one, was, that one was a lot of fun. There are no confirmed dates as to how long it will last. They just show, you know, when it's going to start. Do. Lunar skins are There's new. apparently going to be some new skinnies. 
But they and, also uh, release the old skins? Like, yeah, yeah, they make them okay. like, available in crates. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. in crates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also announced by Nintendo, their next mobile game with little to no details outside of the name Mario Kart Tour. Uh, right. right. So I'd like to yeah. speculate, first of all, on what Mario Kart Tour could possibly be. Well, well, Eric, as you may have heard, Aaron and I have become quite the Mario Kart connoisseurs as yeah. of late. Oh, yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Good which fucking I, game. And yeah, I, I, it's just such a good game. I don't know what it is about it. It's like, a really good kart so, game. Yeah. So honestly, even if, like, I'm just kind of excited for this. I'm thinking maybe it'll be like some form of, like, build control. That's what people are saying. Like, honestly, I could see it. I could see that, obviously, would be, like, the, the best option mario kart but the the thing is mario kart tour for some reason it gives me this idea of like think that like the animal crossing formula that we had before you yeah. know where you're like like maybe you you like don't race but you're like the character and then you like or like magic kart jump where you like kind of just do a race and then like the probabilities say like what place you got in how good your cart is and mm -hmm. like you have to manage yeah. the different Grand Prix or whatever, and things like that. You have to like get better and better cars or something. I feel like that would could also be possible where you don't actually race. I hope it's not yeah. that. I hope yeah, it's not I that, but too. I think that's a very mobile thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Here's what I hope it is. No, I'm just kidding. No. This is what a ludicrous idea. What if Pokemon it, Go? Yes. That's it, literally it, what I was, was like. What if, what if it's an augmented <laughs> reality? Yeah, I was like, what if it uses <laughs> it tracks your GPS? <laughs> And so you have to get with eight of your friends and get in real cars <laughs> and go out into like the middle of the of nowhere somewhere like the middle of the country and just drive. There's a race and it just it gives you like a certain route to take. Like it like randomizes based on where you are. It uses your GPS and you have to keep going laps in that area. What? And it hooks up to your uh, yeah. car's like yeah. engine and stuff. So if you get hit by an item, it just shuts off your car. <laughs> oh my god! Yes. <laughs> yeah. Be awesome. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, if Where, you, yeah. Worst case it. scenario, it's that exactly, except it's a running app. Oh my god. You have to like, yeah. And like it cuts your hamstrings if you get hit with a wrench. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're just like, it reverses you your like, blood flow. Yeah. You like uh, have to order actual items that you can just like throw at your friends. Oh this god. is all escaping the realm of video games now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just real life excitement now. <laughs> just beating um, the shit out of people. Yeah. The other thing that I think is actually possible uh, is along the lines of mario run super mario run where you like tap oh, to, yeah. for him to jump and you yeah. do like tricks and you can go back and forth and whatever i feel like there could be like a lack of a better term um like quick time event carding game yeah. on your phone where you're not actually driving but you're like you come to a thing and it's like you get an alert that there's a shell and you have to like, like drift, it's like yeah. drift this way or drift that way yeah. or whatever That'd be cool. i think that would be interesting too just because i feel like people are sick of the like old timey iphone like Moving around like yeah, this. Who's beeping? And plus, I, I imagine it would be kind of hard to actually that. see what's going on on the screen if you're like. Yeah, that, that was always the problem yeah. with that. So I think for, that would be. For audio listeners, I'm like rapidly moving my phone to Yes, yeah, back and to and fro, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. also announced that uh, they're, they're having a partnership with Illumination Entertainment, which I believe is the people behind the uh, Despicable Me movies. Oh. They're making an animated feature film that will star Mario. They didn't oh. say it was a Super Mario movie. They said it will star Mario. It's actually just Ready Player One. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's the way to do that. I mean, like, the thing about, I think the reason video game movies, like, fall so flat on their face all the time is because... Trying to be real. Yeah, there's this pressure to, like, enter the world of realism because they're yeah. like, we're going to make this movie gritty and appeal to people. And I'm like, no, you should just make it... Like, the reason that Mario appeals to people is not because it's gritty and realistic. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. the reason... And, and the same is true of, like, even something like Assassin's Creed is, like, you enjoy the, like, fantasy of jumping around yeah. as, as an assassin and doing some cool-ass shit, as opposed to, like... Yeah, considering that something. movie was centered around, a lot around the Animus, like, right. the technology, that's the thing that no one cares about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. why, after Assassin's Creed 3, they were like, we're just gonna kind of throw that out, most of the game's just gonna take place in the world. You're not gonna have to come out after every mission and, like, walk to your bedroom and listen to a professor talk for, like, two yeah. hours, which is literally how Assassin's Creed 1 went. It was yeah. stupid. Anyway... Um, they also announced that Nintendo Switch Online will launch in September. There's no specific details, but this is another thing I want to postulate about. They didn't say it was a paid service. Presumably it is. Yeah. 
But do you think it will be along the lines of PS Plus and Xbox Live Gold? They've said in the past that you will, there will be games that you can play monthly with the, yeah. with the service. Hmm. But they never explicitly say that it will limit your online usage. Like, without the service, will you be able to play Mario Kart online? Yeah, kind of like how uh, old PS, like PS3 is like PS and more. So, like, you can still play stuff online. But if you have PS and Gold, you got like free games. You got free games. Like yeah, or is yeah. it gonna be like that, or is it gonna be like now where it prohibits your use of online service if you don't yeah. have it? Hmm. I feel like that's hard to say for Nintendo because like there aren't that many multiplayer games that you would have that you would need to play online. And if you limit that, that you need the online service. That's like well, again, yeah, it's I, like I just want to play Splatoon online, and Mario Kart. Online you know? it's Mario like, Kart, yeah. Right. So are they gonna are they gonna charge for that? It seems I say no. It's kind of like you said, like the. Because, I mean, Mario Kart, Splatoon, what else is even... Like, what major game is even Arms, online? I guess. Arms, okay. Is that a yeah. major game? I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. Arms. I wouldn't say it is, but... I'll look at that again. And how much will it be if that is the case? I feel like yeah. Nintendo wants to be this, like, new kind of take on the modern. Like, they want to change things up. But I don't want them to fall into that trap, and I feel like they easily yeah. could. Right. I feel also, like they easily could fall into the... Imagine how insane it would be if... Super of the new Super Smash Bros. for Switch, at online. Online. Like, That's the other yeah. thing. Are they gonna just push this out and be like, "Here's the online service. These are the games that you're gonna get this month, and so on and so forth." Are they gonna be Virtual Console? Are they gonna be real like Switch games? Are they yeah. gonna be indie games? And do they put anything out next to it? Like, what big online game are they gonna push the online service with that also yeah. comes out in September? Is it Smash Bros. Finally? I don't know. I want it to be Smash Bros. Obviously, nice. yeah. but it's hard to say until we get more details. I hope they could even potentially just give us virtual console with the online service. They could be like, "I'm making the online service, and here's also a virtual console." Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a logical step, and I think that it would be logical for them to like, because I feel like you know, I mean, Nintendo is the kind of company that like puts out one or two really really solid things at a time yeah and like as opposed to you know um and i think the way to handle the like free games that you're getting through the thing would be through the virtual console and it would be cool to like debut them both at the same time i feel um, like that's probably the most grounded yeah yeah yeah, a possibility but then we're, we also have to think this is nintendo and they don't always do the most grounded thing uh labo so, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Speaking of uh, gold and plus, we got the games for February. They will uh, be available tomorrow, or I guess today if you're watching this on Patreon. Yesterday if you're on YouTube, uh, but tomorrow as of filming this, uh, we get Knack for PS4. All praise Knack. Ryan for PS4. Spelunker HD for PS3. Mugen Souls Z for PS3. Exiles End for Vita and Grand Kingdom. For Vita and PS4 cross by. Um, you three are all PlayStation Plusers. Yes. yes. Yep. Do any of these really, things sound that exciting? I don't really know what Grand Kingdom is. Uh, I don't either. I'm assuming it's a. I've heard of it, but I'm assuming it's like some sort of indie like thing. I mean, Rhyme looks good. Doesn't... Rhyme looks cool. Yeah, Rhyme, but, Rhyme, yeah. Like really, like a game that is it was like a... well known for just being okay. What was the PS4 launch title? Yeah. You know, and plus they need to push Knack Two right now. It doesn't make. It makes a lot of sense, I would think. Yeah, definitely makes sense, and it's one of those things that it's like I, I was interested in that game, but I would never buy never it. buy it. Yeah. So you know, I'll play it for free. But if you play it, it for free, and then you're like, yeah, this is fine, you might mm-hmm. think about buying an act too. Exactly. So that's I exactly. Mean, what I they probably need to won't, do. but Grand you, Kingdom, someone might. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It appears to be like uh, like a tactical role playing game, kind of like Fire Emblem. Okay, or, uh, that's cool. Sounds good. Kind of looks cool. kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know. It seems like something that I might be into, but also. Also regularly thirty dollars, so I guess it's good that it's free. Yeah. It looks pretty good actually. Look at yeah. I'm over your shoulder here. Like, now you guys nice. prepare for this. The Far Cry Five season pass has detailed its DLC that will come out, you know, yeah. along, along this year after its release in March. I think. That sounds right. I'll double check. I feel like it got delayed to April or something, but anyway. Actually, yeah, that, that also sounds three great. DLC packs. I'm gonna list off the name, and then I wanted you to just go around and give your first, like, little quick, like, what could that possibly be? Yeah, so just a, pr- just a prediction, it's like a okay. sentence. Okay, hours of darkness. Trapped in a cave. Dark for a really long time. 
Okay. <laughs> um, Good one. Very literal. I like that. <laughs> I don't know. The sun in, 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 goes etern- <laughs> eternal night mode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Players will travel back in time to Vietnam and battle the Viet Cong soldiers. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess. Okay. I kind of like that. that That's sense. cool, but also why? Um, dead living zombies. I will have Easy. Dead living zombies, it sounds, yeah, it sounds like zombies There's a twist, though. Are dead. What's the twist? The zombies uh, are coming back to life. Kind of like a reverse zombie situation. Okay. And you are a zombie, and everyone yeah. else is alive. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just people fighting each other. They're not even zombies. <laughs> it's people. It's bad uh, salts. Yeah. Uh, uh, players will face hordes of zombies in multiple B-movie scenarios. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's cool. Okay. Uh, and the next one, this one's Pretty easy, but it also has like a little bit of a twist. Lost on Mars. What's yes. the twist? You're on Mars, but you're lost. You're lost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's an island. I don't know, like in Lost. Okay. Um, maybe a kind of John Carter of Mars sort of situation. Explain. Um, do you ever John Carter? He was like that. It was like that pulp. Like fiction, yeah. like kind of who wrote it? Burroughs, I think. I don't know how to explain it. He was like a dude, and he went to Mars, and there's all these like humanoid aliens there, and he like fights them. And he's like really strong, and he becomes like a champion, kind of like Doom Guy, okay. a little, yeah. but with more James. What's the romance, twist? I guess the twist about being on Mars. No, yeah, Lost on Mars DLC. Um, you're, I don't know, you're um, lost on Mars, but you. Are under the surface of the planet the whole time. Uh, Lost to Mars, players will leave Earth beyond uh, behind to go toe to claw with Martian arachnids. Oh, so that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, I don't know how the school. I don't know the fuck they're tying these things, these three things into Far Cry Five. But I'm about it. Yeah, right. Yeah, all like, those sound pretty dope. Also, the release yeah. date on that is the 27th of March. I think. It are was they all going to be like cool. standalone games, like Blood Dragon was? No, or? I don't think so. Far Cry, Fly, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon was not a part of this season pass for Far Cry 3. Actually, yeah. I don't even think Far Cry 3 had a season pass. Yeah. So, um, but that being said, Far Cry 3 Classic Edition coming back. Looks all good and pretty. I would go back and play Fight that. Voss again. It's a good game. Yeah. I, I just played it not, like, last year, so yeah. I'm not going to play it again. But good game. I never got that into Far Cry, so it'd be good oh, to go Far back Cry. and play it again. My cousin's a big Far Cry. Far Cry. Uh, also, speaking of delays, Red Dead Redemption 2 is nice. effectively delayed from the ambiguous spring 2018 to a confirmed october 26th 2018 fair enough oh that's fine yeah, yeah it's I, fine I it's, think... it's prime time for red dead 2 yeah right in the fall uh also yakuza 6 the song of life has been delayed by sega to april 17th what am i gonna oh, do okay. it's yeah. yeah it's already out in japan uh but they're pushing it i've always wanted to play those games they look really over the top and funny they are very over the top. Cool. yeah lots of mini games i hear uh ea has confirmed that Anthem will be in fact delayed to 2019. Damn it! But filling this the spot this fall season that Anthem was going to take place of going to be in is a brand new and yet unannounced game in the Star Wars universe, Battlefield universe, Star Wars Battlefront universe. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we tie that around. Uh, Battlefield. Nice. nice. Oh. Yeah, James got it. A new Battlefield game. Hell I hope yeah. it's a World War II Battlefield. Yeah, because they just did World War One. I, it's I doubt that that... I, hope it's I other... wouldn't put it past them, but I doubt that would happen. It would be hope... really cool. Did you guys ever play Battlefield 2142? Yes. Yeah. I hope it's something like that. that I would, would love cool. another sci-fi Battlefield. That yeah, game that was be cool. cool. And yeah. they haven't done anything in that realm. I played it when I was younger. In a while. Because my dad had Speaking it. of Battlefield, I'll hop in real quick. Uh, I've been playing Battlefield 1, finally. Um, games. Beautiful. And yeah, it, yeah, it, it does look very good. It looks amazing, and the I've been, I haven't even touched the online yet, because I've just been playing through the War Stories thing, and it's actually really, really nicely done. Like, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's it's like a, a series, I think it's six, like, mini campaigns that right. are up about, like, four or five levels apiece. Um, and, like, the, sim- the way they, the, like, the they're telling the story is just, like, really well done. Like, the voice acting is, is incredible. and just, It's not just, like, like, go to this place, shoot them, get to there, right. shoot some more people. Like, yeah, it's... You, kinda, you, you get the feels. It's pretty cool, yeah. There's a lot of, like, heart-pounding moments, and, uh, yeah, it's nice. Also, following uh, the announcements news, right here in the smack dab of the news, uh, described as God of War meets Shadow of the Colossus, Iron Galaxy, the studio behind Killer Instinct, has confirmed what? the release date of their new project, Extinction. Okay. April 10th. Now, 
Oh, is that oh, you're, fi- you're fighting um, dinosaurs. They they look it. like sort of like mythological creatures like you would expect in God of War. They yeah. act from the trailer. They act kind of like Shadow of the Colossus, the like big like hulking things. They just yeah. kind of go around. Um, and it's it the, your character moves very much like a hack and slash with the the dual blades like God of War did. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't really know what to expect for that. It's um, like uh, oh, excuse me. Shadow of the Colossus, but like more action oriented and stuff, yeah. like stabbing a specific spot. Yeah, I guess. So really quickly, more more a modern take on Shadow of the Colossus, where things are quick time events as opposed to actually doing things. So well, a little, little check that out. just a little poking <laughs> yes. on the, the well, battlefield thing. Oh yeah, and so the prevalent the prevalent rumors. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any basis no, for these. Geez. The prevalent rumors are that it'll either be a bad company game, nice. interesting, which I would be into. Cause yeah, I think. Like I stand too. by the fact that I think the mechanics of that game feel different, and I like that line I, better. I no. will okay, <laughs> continue, and then I'll go back. And the other, more prevalent rumor is that this will be Battlefield Battle Royale. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> makes sense. God damn it. Oh, uh, speaking of Battle Royale games. Wait, before you do that. I don't think it's going to be Bad Company because I think it'll be built very similarly in the engine of Battlefield 1, which yeah, is why they can put it out so fast. Yes. So I don't think it'll be Bad Company. I do think the next prevalent Battlefield release in the series, like not Hardline level, but like four, like three, four, and one series, right. will be a Bad Company. Yeah. That would be smart. Anyway. Um, speaking of Battle Royale games, I don't yes. know if any of you guys have heard of a game called Hunt Showdown. It's supposed to be coming out this year. Nope. Um, it's... I can't remember who's developing it, but... Basically what it is, is it's kind of a battle royale game, and it drops a bunch of teams of players onto a big open map, but they're all demon hunters. Okay. And so the objective of it's like set in like the 1930s or 40s, I think, like kind of like early-ish 1900s. Um, and the objective is you're all like demon hunters with like kind of like magic powers-ish, but not really. And your objective is to hunt down this giant... Uh, NPC demon creature roaming the map. And it's evolved. Kind of, but the idea is to kill the other players so, so that you can get win. the bounty. Yeah. Right. Oh, so that's like, super cool. Yeah, so yeah. like you can set up traps and like lay right. down like hexes and stuff like that. It looked really cool from what I was seeing. And um if you kill players who like had some kind of like tracking point on yeah. the, on the yeah. monster you get their information, and then it, like, grays out certain parts of the map, so it's like, oh, the monster won't be there. Check these parts of the area. Interesting. And so it looks it looks how, really cool. What's people... it called? Um, Hunt Showdown. That sounds Showdown. awesome. It's yeah. being created it's by Crytek. No, oh, yeah, it's Crytek. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay, how many people yeah. drop in? Um, I'm not sure. I think, from what I saw in the trailer, it looked like somewhere between, like, 8 and 12, but I'm not, oh. I'm not entirely sure. I, I, don't, I don't think it's, like, a ton. I thought it'd be, like, yeah. 25. Like, it's, that'd be it's, it's, like, a decent amount. It might be more than that, but I'm not sure. Okay, makes sense. Wow. Um, Get, like, Mosin the guys. I've got a couple that we'll kind of just go through. We're, we're almost at the end. Um, David Brevik, the creator of Diablo, obviously hasn't been working on Diablo for very long. Yeah. Or hasn't been in a while. Uh, announced his next project, It Lurks Below. Looks very similar to Terraria. Not much details about it, but you can go and watch their like constant Twitch stream because it's in closed beta right now. Oh. But there's no further release date. Um, also, I don't know how much the conversation this will bring up, but I think it's important to note is that GDC happened 2018. They give out a oh, right. Pioneer Award and they give out a Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. Uh, the Pioneer Award went this year to Atari co-founder Nolan Bushnell. But a couple days later... It was rescinded because of allegations of his misconduct at Atari, like back in the seventies and eighties. You know, like being like misogynist and yeah. like operating in a way that is not okay for today's standards. Yeah. But back then, it was like they were doing coke and like he had like a hot tub in the studio. And he would get the female workers like come over and like sit. Yeah, it was. It's yeah, not great. Yeah, yeah. That being said, all of these things are things that we already knew. Yeah. Like, like well-known things about Nolan Bush now. It's just how, like, the 70s were. Yeah. And it's been in books, and everyone was considering it. And I guess... Which doesn't the, mean it's okay. It, no, yeah. it's obviously not okay, which is why the GDC came out and said, we believe, quote, we believe the picks should reflect the values of today's games industry and will, and will dedicate this year's award to honor the pioneering and unheard voices of the past as a generic giving of the Pioneer Award, as opposed oh. to specifically Nolan Bush now. 
he came out and said, obviously, because it's not a surprise, everyone knows about this. Uh, he responded very well in a civil manner on Twitter. Big statement. It's all cool. But it's an important thing. Cool. And next year, a Pioneer Award will be given to someone else. Um, I don't so. know if this is the news or not, but Stanley was hospitalized on Oh, uh, I did not I put it in the news, but he is out of the yeah, hospital. Yeah, he's fine now. Oh, what happened? It was a big Just, scare. I, get, I don't know. He's old. He's old. Yeah, he's old literally people. like 97, yeah. I think. He's 95. He had a regular heart, irregular heartbeat, I think. Yeah. yeah. Which is why he was... Speaking. Continuing on, uh, flip side, after a very successful six-year reign, Sony CEO Kaz Hara will step down to chairman. Beginning with April 1st, current Sony CFO... Kenichiro Yoshida will take on the role. Oh. He was very important Same. in bringing PlayStation to the place where it is now, fixing Sony, you know, reprioritizing. Did a very good job uh, in a time of need. And we'll see what this guy does. But I think Sony's sitting pretty right now, so I don't think we have any cause to really worry. Yeah, yeah great. Uh, I think you'll find this potentially the most interesting. Similar to CW's Gotham, but exclusive to Warner Brothers' 2019 streaming service that this is the first time I've heard about. Oh, God. Uh, a live-action Superman prequel series named metropolis has been announced and will focus on lex luther and lois lane that sounds not uh, interesting yeah. why would anybody I mean, it could want be cool, this but it's the same thing as gotham right it's like, it, it is it is exactly the same thing it's as like gotham. oh we're gonna make a right prequel down. to the batman like batman it doesn't exist what are the villains doing you know and then, but like, in that case, the villains are more compelling. Yeah. And in this one, it's like... Oh, it's also kind of funny because, like, now throughout Gotham, they've had, like, Bruce Wayne, like, being a more prevalent character. Yeah. It's like, man, well, I guess we should probably put some Batman in here. But it's like yeah. seven yeah. seasons later. Yeah, they're it's like, crazy. Uh, Has it really been going on for it's seven a, It's a long... I don't know if it's seven, like but it's been a long time. It wasn't that good. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, right down to it being called Metropolis. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, exactly... That's a little weird. It is know. a little weird. Really uh, weird. This one's cool, though. One Punch Man manga artist, Yusuke Murata. Sorry, I'm butchering that. Is working on a series based on the original Back to the Future movie. That's cool. First issue will publish on April 20th. From the stills, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, with directional credits of Westworld, Better Call Saul, Castle Rock, and more, Nicole Castle. Castle? Uh, I don't know. Right there? Cassell? Castle? Yeah. yeah. Has been brought on to direct the pilot of HBO's Watchmen series with oh, showrunner that's, uh, that's cool. Damon Lind- Lindelof. Wait. Wait. Uh, no, hold on. Uh, okay, no, keep going. I'm, I'm okay. I only have one more thing, and it's a and it's a doozy. I wonder if all of the actors from the Watchmen movie are gonna. I be highly wait, doubt it. That's what what it's the guy who did Lost. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, that's that must Damon? be right. Yeah. Sounds I was like, familiar. why is that name so important to me? And I was like, oh, right. Yeah, he's doing a uh, Watchmen for HBO. Wow, cool. That might be if really pilot, really good if the pilot gets picked up. Obviously, <laughs> guys, April seventh, the day after my birthday. It's the air date for the first episode of season three of My Hero Academia. That's dope. What a good oh, birthday. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> and is that, that that's airing like it'll be on Crunchyroll and we can actually watch it as opposed to like Seven Deadly Sins. Crunchyroll or... is doing week of dubs for nice. My Hero, I believe. They did prior in prior that's seasons. Aaron. So I would imagine they are doing it. Yeah. Aaron. It's a birthday. Uh, Fucking birthday. Uh, uh, yeah, my birthday. Uh, good one. Okay. So that's all the news. Hell yeah. We're going to move into our one and only topic. And once again, it has come down to Game Side Club. <laughs> February, February. 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 Wow, I'm going to give this speech show. I always give because if you're new to the show, Game Side Club is something that we do the first podcast of every month. The month prior, we say, we're going to play this. We're going to read this. We're going to watch this or whatever. And then we discuss it. Spoilers unleashed for the topic. Of the show, uh, we've done Journey, we've done Hatful Boyfriend, Event Zero, Oxen Free. We did Tatami Galaxy, which is anime. It's the first time we did something that wasn't a game, and uh, now we did East of West Volume One. It's a comic book series, and if you haven't read it and you're interested because you're just catching up, it's like a give, give like a Aaron, give me like a spiel for someone that doesn't know about it. They just joined the show. And they, right, want, to well, know, they want to know what this is about before they before we spoil anything. I was anything. describing it to one of my friends at work, and I was like, yeah, it's it's basically like a sci-fi kind of post-apocalyptic western about, well, not really post, I guess it is technically pre-apocalyptic. Um, right. <laughs> because that's so, the whole point. That is, um, the, yeah. Like, I guess dystopian would be the yeah, like a sci-fi, yeah. like dystopian western about the four horsemen of the apocalypse Three of them are trying to bring on the apocalypse, and the fourth one, death, um, 
is trying to stop that right, trying from, to from happening. And Death is like a gunslinger. It's really, really cool. He travels with his two aides, Crow and Wolf, which I think is really fucking cool, because yeah. like, um, as described, you know, riding on a pale horse followed by a crow and a wolf, so on and so forth. Yeah, right. Um, so I thought that was really cool. So, if that interests you, go read the first five issues, volume one, and then come back and listen to our spoilerific episode as we talk about our impressions, and then pick the next Game Side Club candidate for March. Yes. So, boys, let's get into it. Yeah. I'm going to start... Stop setting the table. Alex, <laughs> give your first impressions. Uh, you, can, you can sprinkle in some spoilies. Some spoilies but let's just get your spoilies. general look as we normally do. Um, and then we'll kind of move on from that. I really, I really appreciated it. It was just very different. Okay. And very, like, interesting. Interesting word like, choice. I've, I've never really... Like, I've never seen that concept of, like, sci- like sci-fi western we've seen, but, like, sci-fi Civil War yeah. was really was a really cool, new, interesting concept. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the designs for things were pretty good, I liked. Um, I really liked the little, like, the, the other three horsemen and how they were kind of like little kids. Yeah. yeah. And that was sort of, like, the, the joke is they're, like, super powerful, but everyone's just like, you're, you're just a bunch of kids. And yeah, right. like, Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I guess if I, if I had to throw in a complaint, okay. I thought the art style could have been a little more Interesting. something. It very much just had that like kind of generic comic book mm-hmm. style that is in pretty much every other comic book nowadays. And yeah. like, it was, it was like, I mean, it was perfectly serviceable. Like it wasn't yeah. bad. I just thought it would have been cool if, I don't know, maybe they had a little, more unique. A, little, a little more unique. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Definitely. Yeah. James. Yeah, I mean, I've been talking about it for a while. Cause I actually ended up reading it kind of early um, in the month, in the month, just because I I was going to New York and I needed something to occupy my time while I was on the bus and stuff. Um, and I love it so much. Um, I downloaded the second volume already, um, but I haven't really started it because I've been reading some other things. But I just, I mean, I'm, I'm a big Western buff. I just love the whole, all the tropes and like seeing the way that they play out within this kind of like super interesting post pre apocalyptic thing. That's the other thing that I really like about it is I'm really interested in like the lore of the world. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. the whole like the message and all of the like quasi religious factions yeah. that are like operating. Um, and like yeah like some of my favorite parts like the first like the at the beginning when it's like going through like how did we end up here yeah and then yeah like the way it's all being tied together is really cool um and i'm kind of just really excited to see where it goes i'm just really interested in in the characters and in the in what's gonna happen and impressions uh first impressions i kind of like what alex said the first thing that i like i saw i was like i didn't really like I wasn't like awed by the art style. I did. There was something I really liked about it. I liked how Death and his familiars are like, like entirely like white as yeah, like a contrast cool. to everything. I thought that looked really cool. Um, but like the art style, you like, like you said, it's really simple. Um, just normal run of the mill comic book stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know who drew it. Um, I really like the plot. Like it's it's really original, really cool. I like. I mean, it's like. It's a blending of a bunch of, like, really basic tropes, like, oh, the Four Horsemen is, like, actual characters, that's sci-fi, dystopian, western, like, a bunch of stuff put together, but, like, done in, like, a really unique way. Um, like you said that, like, the, the Three Horsemen, the other Three Horsemen being yeah. little kids, I thought was kind of cool, and it's also, yeah. it's interesting, because, like, I was, as I was going through it, I kept, like, being, like, are they getting, like, bigger? Like, you see, you yeah, see them kind of, like, growing throughout yeah, the, yeah, throughout the are, first couple yeah. issues. Um... And then, like a little bit later, I don't know how far you guys got, but like they start from what I from what I saw when I was like just looking up like images. Assume of that like we've that. only read the first five issues. Okay, yeah. Um, but like I was just looking up like images of it before I started reading it. Um, and like you can see them as like grown adults. It's really cool. Yeah, they did have the one scene where I'm just trying to not get into too deep. No, into spoilers, we're good they, spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, well, they, they have the one scene. Open spoilers now. Yeah, they have the one scene where they uh, show how that that girl lost her hands. Yeah, and they yeah. had those war. I assumed those were the other three horsemen that yeah. they were fighting, or yeah. like their previous incarnations. That was like, yeah, because yeah. yeah. uh, the because war mentions that um, he was a woman yeah. beforehand, so like yes. you can yeah. see her with like the whip and shit. Um, that's really cool. I. I don't, I don't know why, but like I just really think that Crow and Wolf are awesome. Like I'm, yeah, I'm really into those characters. Is. I'm not sure why. Um, I want to 
touch on the more about them. <laughs> I want to touch on the thing that you mentioned before is um them the three of them being bathed all in white and black. Yeah. I thought the beginning my first impression was not good because I thought the beginning of the first issue was very scattered to the point where yeah, you really didn't know what was going yeah. on. It was kind of bouncing around times and you don't know exactly who are the horsemen and who are not. So, and there's the whole thing about the there being three of them, like the three and then there's the one. You don't, and you see these three characters that are all white, and you're like, they go into the bar, and you're like, okay, these are the three horsemen. I guess they're working together. Yeah, that's kind and of then the where's the other guy? First. They're talking about somebody. It's like, what is really going on there? And you come to see that like the other ones are actually coming out of the pool. They're like being reincarnated. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand why he is all white and the other two people are all white. Because they're his familiars. Yeah. So they belong to him. They're not like... Like, they're like his like companions, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's like part of his lore, I think. Yeah, okay, so they're like extensions of, the... of him. Yeah, kind kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, they're not extensions. Like they're all, like they're their own things, but like they're his like helpers. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Because I, I I don't know. Maybe it's just like a weird thing about me not knowing any of this going in. Is that like he he's kind of presented as like this lone ranger, like gunslinging guy. Yeah. As death, like he needs to take on everybody, and he's against the three other horsemen, and then yeah. it's like, oh, but actually he, he has I mean, a, he's he's rolling with a posse, yeah. which is like weird to me. But I don't, I didn't go in knowing yeah. this whole crow and wolf thing. Yeah, yeah, it's just part of like how death was like described in like old like lore and shit. Um, okay. yeah, I made the connection that like he was death, and like there were his like companions just from like that opening scene where war and famine and all them like get summoned or like. Like yeah. emerge mm-hmm. they're going like they're all the their colors. Well, I also wasn't exactly sure as to like in what order are these things being placed. Oh yeah, you know what I mean, like it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going yeah, side by side. Yeah, it was definitely side. a little convoluted at the start, but like it, it got, got got down to brass tacks real. Yeah, quick. once we got past that and I started piecing these yeah. together, I was like, okay, now we're definitely in also. I'm oh, sorry, just to no, just go. before the moment passes, you touched on something. There was like a great use of colors. I yeah. thought, yeah, like, yeah. like thematically, like all each character seemed to kind of have their own color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and it was interesting, like things related to them were that same color, and I just yeah, thought that was a nice little touch. Cool. Yeah, sorry. Um, I really like how I thought it was kind of interesting how it's like it's pretty over the top. Like it kind of comes off as like smooth, and then like the more it gets into it, like the fact that the three horsemen kill like. 18 some senate members right. just so they can get the one that they want in a yeah. specific place yeah. of power i thought that was like oh my fucking god that was like, a good it was like oh yeah. this guy this guy this guy this guy all right who the fuck is next like yeah. they just kept like, i guess we'll line. take her like, yeah. Yeah. yeah so i thought that was cool i liked the world building and how there was that meeting of the whatever the hell they were called. that was what i was gonna bring up was yeah. the moment where i was like where i started to, to understand the whole prophecy thing is yeah. that they mm-hmm. had this council of people and i was like that was the point where I was like, all of these characters are like a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so right. it's like, this is not as grand of the story as I thought yeah. it was. But I liked them all. I thought they were all very interesting takes that I wouldn't have expected. Yeah, I thought it it's was It's like, cool. it was a weird extension of the Civil War. And all the factions yeah. that were involved in that. And I was like, that's something I would have never have thought yeah. to put into like a sci-fi pre-post yeah. semi-apocalyptic situation. I like how the different countries also had like, I like the different like leaders of each like council type thing. Obviously had like very discernible like clothing styles and like you could like yeah. like the one guy that Death goes and talks to is like very clearly Britain and like yeah. there's like the Eastern like Asian type style layer areas there's like the the uh, like the Russian type people with like the big like fur shit. I really um, like the uh, the Texas guy. Yeah, <laughs> like because he was just basically wearing the flag with, and he had like the ridiculous smug oh, mustache. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I was like, of course that's the guy who would be in charge of Texas. Like, the guy, right. the guy that's like kind of. He's gray, kind of, like in the middle. Yeah. He's yeah. like he's not really short. for the message. Or yeah. yeah, he's not really for it, but he's just yeah. kind of there. Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of that, uh, speaking of like the Eastern inspired stuff, mm-hmm. how about that Golden Gate Bridge I like with the, like the giant yeah. like San Francisco? Like, yeah. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like the very like Shinto temple styled like pillars for the bridge. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was cool. I did like that. Yeah. Um, also, Death's wife is a thing, which yeah. I think was pretty cool. Like they're he's going after her. Well, that's like the big. Yeah, the big lead up is you know the person like no one can, you know, quell him except except, like except for her. Yeah, yeah. it's like she's the person that conquered death or whatever. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting. 
and they start talking about uh, their son and whatever. Yeah. Did you or did you not see that twist coming where he's like this the monster or whatever that's inside yeah. the pod? Yeah. Did you see that coming? No, I didn't I even didn't realize, realize there was something. Because I didn't even realize there was something in the I, pod. I, I thought they were yeah, just kind right? of yeah. I didn't see it coming. And one of the things that I, I you know I've talked about this a little bit, but I've been using the comicsology dynamic viewer. I have so as well. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty cool, right? It is, yeah. I'm like it's like it like really lends itself to like it feels very cinematic as you're like flipping through. And um, yeah, I was talking about that a little bit. Um, that's well, not no, what that's it is, that's though. not what this is. I'll show it to you in a second, but um. Because it, you know, it's like build up, build up, build up, and the, it just paces itself so well. So mm. by the time I got to that, it's like you have all these small little panels, and then it, like you click to the next one, it's just like this full page of like just the child with like all the mechanical stuff all over its face. Yeah. So it's like, oh god, yeah, it's like, wild. Yeah, it does yeah. that really well. It like really, yeah. really hits you, and I didn't see it coming at all. So it's like, oh shit, what the hell? Yeah, really yeah. cool. Um, the other thing that I I wanted to bring up something specifically, and I I don't exactly remember what it was. So if someone else wants to take a lead on some another impression that they had well this is a very minute little thing but it's something that i loved um i thought i took more screenshots i tried to like take some screenshots of some of my favorite panels but oh, i think i kind of think mind. i gave up because i just kept taking them i was like yeah this is too many um but i really loved this whole thing where obviously you, you can't see this so i'll explain to you what it is um it's uh how they would take when someone something was oh, happening to yeah. somebody or something was happening that you know there involved sound um they would use the text of the sound as the actual panel. Yeah, so, so describe the one you have. Yeah, so the one I have, this guy is getting shot through the kneecap, um, and his, it's like his leg is getting blown off, essentially. Um, and it just says blam, um, like sort of vertically down, yeah. uh, and the text of the word blam makes yeah. up the three panels of his body, and like, his yeah. leg exploded. Pretty badass. Um, oh, and they do that, uh, he he does that a bunch, and it's like a super cool artistic choice, and it is very like over the top, but I yeah. think it really lends itself yeah. to this sort of visceral, like the ridiculous. western, like, it's kind of like, a, it's almost like a Tarantino It is very, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I was it's... thinking the same thing, like when they have the scene where Death and company kind of come in and fight all those soldiers at once. Yeah. I was, I was like, like, yeah, I was like this like is all almost dead. a little yeah. silly, yeah. but like, at the same time, just fucking cool. kill yeah. everybody, yeah. Yeah, it is Tarantino esque, definitely. I think they did something like that for the for that scene. Like, I'm pretty sure that panel was. Well, there's this. I I did save that image. Uh, Yes, Simon. Yeah, I can go look. But that's the thing that I about the art art style being like it in itself isn't very special. Like you were saying, it's just like this is a pretty solid comic style. You know, Mm -hmm. none of the characters like. They're particular. They're they're interestingly designed because of you know the concepts of them, but in it in its presentation is nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the things that they do in the normal medium of the comic is very cool. Like yes, they they absolutely. take stretches in certain ways that make it more unique. Yeah. That I think a lot of people would be completely content in just using the style. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. I had no like major problem with it. I guess like if I had to have, I would just spent like if I had to have something I said was not totally awesome. If I had to complain. Like, if I had to complain, and you know I love to complain, you know. Yeah. Um, Um, Yeah. Unfortunately, I took the first volume off my iPad in order to make room for the second volume because I'm running out of (laughs) storage. Um, So, yes, I can't pull that up, but, yeah. (laughs) Next thing you know, the game side guy's camera switches to blam as Aaron shoots himself. Oh, my God. All right, well. (laughs) Let's try try and avoid that. Yeah, so the other thing I want to bring up... uh, how do you guys feel about the presentation of the message? Because I was in the, the beginning part where the, it's like the Indian chief is getting the prophecy and the other guy's like writing down the next book right. of Revelations mm-hmm. or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. They all finished it at the same time. Yeah. yeah. But, and the guy from the Mal dynasty. But I tried to go back a couple pages and I don't think at any point they explicitly say what the message is Wait. until later. Yeah. When. Think those things are happening, and they explain them piece by piece. And I thought that was a weird choice. Oh no, I, I like that a lot. Because I feel like if they had presented the message at first, like explicitly, like this is what the, the message was, and you could kind of like try and tie your own ideas into what the message was as things were happening, and then they get explained to you at the end. Mm-hmm. I thought that would. That's just personally like a narrative thing I would have chosen to do. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think overall I, I like the way it was done. I mean, what what you're saying definitely makes sense, and I don't think it's like a bad, it would be a bad narrative choice, but I, I just yeah. really like the whole, like, 
you're getting all this information and you you don't really know what it is and then as you go along like bits and pieces of it slowly start to make sense yeah. but you keep the thing is you keep getting bits and pieces like the pages in between yeah but like, that, that's uh, like for every chalice a chalice for every yeah but at no point it's is like, that like this is the message it just seemed like well, cryptic yeah. little notes i think it's cool like you you kind of put it together yourself yeah maybe it's meant to be a little ambiguous because i mean as far as i understand they were basically just saying like yeah, the world is going to end. Like, what yeah, like, like a very and like vague yeah. apocalyptic metaphor. Yes. Right. And like, it's. I mean, I feel like there has to be more to it, and maybe they get into it later because it just seems a little. Maybe, it, maybe like we were saying, it's just over the top for the sake of being fun. Yes. But it seems a little ridiculous to just be like, "Well, the world's gonna end. Like, let's be, let's all make that happen." Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. That means you're gonna also. Die. I also like, think what, what that's weird. That? Yeah. It's like, what do these people have? Why? What? What is their deal that, that they want to work with the other three horsemen? Maybe they're afraid of them. But I, I, I get that. But wouldn't if even if you're afraid, you still wouldn't succumb to being afraid and just let it end. You would still try and probably prevent it, right? Yeah. Is it? Do yeah. you think there's some sort of stake that we're not seeing yet? That's kind I of what I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah like there must be something that like they would benefit from like ending the world. Maybe there's some kind of like rebirth. Maybe they yeah. think. Maybe like uh, like the idea that I kind of had was like. Maybe, like, it's since the world is, like, so divided and, like, just all kinds of fucked up, like, maybe they're just like, all right, well, clean slate, everybody, let's just get this shit over with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's also the thing that's, like, they want to bring about the end of the world, but they're also, like, super afraid of this kid and death. Yeah. But wouldn't death come naturally through the apocalypse anyway? So it just seems like... Right now, there's a murkiness in the villainous yeah. characters of the. Well, maybe they're not intentionally meant to be like just directly villains. Like maybe they're you're supposed to kind of see like why they're doing it. I don't know, but we don't see. It. Yeah, <laughs> I like, mean, where... yeah, I, I could almost see if it was just sort of like a like a religion to them, kind of. Yeah. yeah, like in the same way, I don't know, like if if real life Jesus came down from heaven and was like, "Hey, Christians, like you got to do this for for me." Like a lot of they would probably, would probably do, it. do it, yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's just kind of that. Yeah, I but, guess you're right. Yeah, that's like, like I guess like they they are they did seem kind of like religious figures. No, yeah. they definitely did seem religious. Yeah, but like I said, maybe they're just supposed to maybe they're supposed to be a little cartoony just because that's the vibe they're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, like there's a like I said, there's a character who has a huge mustache and is wearing the Texas flag. So yeah. like like maybe not everything's supposed <laughs> to be super serious and make sense. Uh, that's the cool thing yeah. about this. Yeah. like having only read volume one is that they're. Like seven more volumes. Questions, yeah. So yeah, there are unanswered questions that you can answer if you wanted to. So real quick, we might come back to something or whatever. Uh, will you continue reading? No, oh, yeah, definitely. Are you gonna just catch up? You think? Are you gonna try another issue and then potentially probably stop? Gonna read a couple more issues and then like see how I like it and probably just keep reading. Okay. That seems really cool. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep reading. The only reason I haven't already is because I've like rabbit holed through Comicsology and I ended up finding like all this other shit that I wanted to read. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll take a break from East to West. And so now I read Avengers Disassembled and I'm reading through Astonishing X-Men. Nice. And then I'm going to read House of M. So I've sort of been like on my on my comic grind. Um, gotcha. Yeah, but I will read it. Um, yeah, basically what James said. Like, oh, I doing? probably probably will read the second one eventually, but like I also realized I had a bunch of comics on my count that I haven't read, so that like I want to, that I want to read. Are you so. reading anything currently? Um, no, but I think I mentioned this comic book series called Profit. Which is kind of interesting. It sounds familiar. Yeah, I think, speak. yeah, it's like it's like very, very, very loosely based on this old Marvel hero, but it's basically about like it's in the way, way, way future, and it's about like these clones of this guy who are all like sent by Earth to do various tasks on these like alien worlds, but it's all like biotechnology, and there's no like humanoid aliens. Like they're all like it's not like oh there's like a sexy Osari over there. It's all very <laughs> like it's all very like gross, bubbly like bio. Slime aliens, right. kind of like uh, kill six billion demons. Yeah, it's very much like kill yeah. six billion demons. Actually, that sounds dope. What yeah, profit. I'll I'll show you some. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. do not know if I'm going to continue reading, just because <laughs> there's other like really long standing things that I want to get to. Like I really want to start reading Invincible. Yeah. I just haven't yet because I'm like tied down to reading Walking Dead every month. And I usually get back up on that, and that's already 175 issues. It's like <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I I'm I'm into East to West, but I'm not like right now. East to West 
almost feels wrapped to me in like a in a non-conventional way. Like it almost got like that look into something, like a little bit of a story. And yeah. I'm like, I'm satisfied if I didn't keep reading, but I just haven't really decided yet. Yeah, I agree with that too. It did feel like the arc of the first uh, issue. issue. Volume. Thank you, volume. Yeah, I couldn't think of the word. Like, it, it had a very good arc, actually, where, yeah. like, you know, okay, Death wants to find his wife. He's mad at these people. Found his wife, but here's the new thing for right. the next issue. And right. I do kind of want to see how that plays out, but, like, yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, any closing thoughts? Um, East of West Good. It's my, it's my Damn, friends. shit's hot, son. Yeah, I'm really right. excited to be back reading comics again. Yeah. Um, I, just, I haven't been, really, because I don't have any... I don't know. I don't want to buy the paper ones, unfortunately, but I yeah. do want to support the people who are writing them, so it feels good to be doing... Feels good, both. man. Yeah. So, the next Game Side Club will be recorded on the 4th, so if you're a Patreon member and <laughs> at that tier and you want to participate in that, get on all your responses on the 4th, uh, it'll come out on the 5th, on Patreon, and the 6th, on YouTube. We'll be going back to a game, and then after that we'll probably go back to some other sort of medium that's not a video game. We'll be playing, and none of us know anything about this other than the trailer, Pony Island. Pony Island. It looks creepy yeah, and scary and like really yeah. fucking weird. <laughs> Don't think that we're just playing a game called Pony Island. It's yeah, all, face value. It looks like it's all over the place. It's about a two and a half hour to three hour play. Yeah. Uh, it's on Steam. I know for sure. I don't know that it's on any consoles, uh, but that that'll be our next game side club topic. Sick. So, Dope. to all who've listened, this has been the Game Side Podcast, the premier podcast of all kinds of pop culture news. And otherwise, if you like the sound of that, this is the deal. We do the show every Monday on Patreon as a video and MP3, and you get it for only one dollar a month. In fact, that one dollar will get you every one of our videos a day early. And there's also a bunch of other tiers at different levels of monetary value that you can check out to see if anything might interest you. If you're not quite you're not quite sold yet my mouth is tired or you don't have the cash don't worry the show still goes up in video form the very next day on youtube so make sure to hit subscribe if you're listening over there and anywhere else you can find us thank you all for hanging out with us on this lovely super bowl sunday well for us it's super bowl sunday we haven't seen what happens yet you will know whenever this comes out uh go birds or I sure Damn. hope the Patriots win. Damn Patriots. Wow. Damn Patriots. Fuck you, Aaron. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me as well. And we'll catch you next week.